some of you may have known. His name was Bulldog. Bulldog had been on fire for the Lord for many years and was all of them. And for some reason he was there that day. And at the end of the service, Bulldog walked up to me and he said, Can I get that? Nothing that we did, we were just honored to be in the right place at the right time for him. And, and God does that in so many, so many ways. Before I turn this over to Sister Adara, I want to explain. Some of you were here this morning, some of you were not. There is a banana box up here on the platform. Today also is the kickoff of what we're calling our Be Aware and Care program. I've done some research, state of South Carolina alone, 15.8% of all senior citizens in this state, and I misstated this this morning, I said 27, but it's 20. truly physically disabled people in the state of South Carolina live far below the poverty level, most at 150% below or more. These people have to make a decision at the end of each month whether to buy food or whether to buy the medications that they need. They need to do, figure out whether they need to go to the grocery store or go to the doctor they can't do both. They need to decide whether to replace a worn out piece of clothing or to buy meds or to buy you know, what the, the absolute necessities of life. And we know we're there, we're on fixed income. And the end of the third and through the fourth week of the month, there's nothing left. God has been good and gracious. He's got us through it every month without problem and without fail. But it's been through the hands of someone else that stepped up to help. So the Be Aware and Care program is to make people aware because most of these people are forgotten. Their families are gone. They can't get out, so out of sight and out of mind, friends are, are you know, drifting away. We need to let them know somebody does care. We need to let them know that somebody does love them. And it's not contingent upon them being Christian. It's contingent upon them being a human being and having a need. That's right. And I mentioned this this morning. Every dime that we get today in our offering will go directly to begin the Be Aware and Care program. There is some canned goods already in the box up here. That will go directly to the Be Aware and Care program. It, you know, this box will be here almost every week. And we can accept canned goods, fresh goods, even frozen. We have freezer. Monetarily, if anything comes in, it will be to help with the medical expenses, help with transportation to and from, help with clothing. We want to let these people be aware also of who is available to help them. A lot of them don't have a clue. 
They don't have internet. They don't have computers. They don't know how to research it for themselves. And they just are, are existing and not living. And believe me, when you get to be a senior citizen, you deserve and earn the right to have a quality of life. Transparency in this ministry is wide open. Every canned good, every penny will be logged and will be available for anybody to see what's come in, what the needs are, and how it's being spent or going out. said, I first heard this young lady sing a couple of weeks ago or a month or two ago, right here. Very impressed. Wonderful, wonderful lady. Wonderful, wonderful child of God. Sister Adara, would you come forward?
Decisions I can make on my own. And there are trials I can't face all alone. But you said you'd walk with me down the road, road. And you said, Come on to me. Looking for me. 
Pumpkin had already picked out a grave. His plan had moved forward to put me away. I drifted so far. Would anyone care that I'd soon be lost? I knew my destruction was a matter of time. But Jesus appeared, said, this one is not. Now I'm safe with no harm.
Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for this offering that we are about to receive. And Lord, um, I just pray that you just be with everybody here today. Lord, help us to remain in your will, Lord Jesus. I pray that you place your hand upon this church. And I pray that you'd um, shower it with many blessings, many of your blessings, Lord Jesus. And um, I thank you for all these people in here, Lord Jesus, for um, we're just not... Um, Resisting the Holy Spirit, Lord Jesus, and for just freely letting the Holy Spirit work. And um, Lord, just please help that to continue. And we know you are here today. And um, just, Lord, if you're in this, the Holy Spirit, just please let it flood throughout this place today. And as it's all in Jesus' precious and holy name, amen. Amen. Sing this one without music. Oh, one without music? Why should I feel discouraged? Why should the shadows come? Why should my heart be low? 
first thing you know, okay, you Jesus, Jesus. Uh, sure. you know, do you just say Jesus? Go to work, you girl. <laughs> there you go, that's fine with me, I love singing. So. <laughs> Especially for Jesus. Amen. I love singing for Jesus. Amen. Sometimes when we're witnessing, we don't know what to say. And honestly, this song, this song talks about um, how we should just say Jesus. Because there's still power in the name of Jesus. Whenever we mention his name, what, what, what do people do? They turn, who's Jesus? Who said Jesus? It's so powerful. So this is what this song is about. Life gets tough and times get hard. It's hard to find the truth in all the lies. If you're tired of wondering why your heart is healing, nothing feels like home because you're lost in love.
end quote. What the church has become is not the church that Jesus envisioned. What the church has become has become a place of entertainment, a place of feel-good motivational speaking, as Jesus said, a den of thieves. That's right. It has become a home for liars, thieves, con artists. Preach. I may be coming on a little strong, but didn't Jesus call the leaders thieves, liars, hypocrites, a pit of vipers? Didn't he go out and turn over the money changers? Yes, he did. Sure did. Not every church, and I want to bring that out very much in the beginning. Uh, I know Pastor Ray have known him for several years. He and Amy not only preach the word of God, they live the word of God. Churches that are acknowledging gay marriage. That's right. Oh, I'm not supposed to say anything against homosexuals. I'm not. You go to a movie, you don't like, you can hate the act, but you don't hate the actor. So we're supposed to hate the sin and not the sinner. I'm not coming against the homosexual, I'm coming against the act of homosexuality. Word says that is an abomination. Yep. Who will steal from me? You will when you hold back your tithes and offerings. Not my words, God, because it's Him you're stealing from. I mentioned this this morning. There are people that are being blessed. We see it every day in the prosperity message. Some of them are actually being blessed because they're real. Some are not. They're conning you and me out of our money. And we have to have discernment. We as Christians, true Christians, need to stand up against the false prophets. We need to stand up against the false message. We need to stand up against a motivational speaker saying you can do anything you want, follow Jesus, and all of the world is going to be a bed of roses because it ain't happening that way. That's right. Jesus Amen. never said it's going to be an easy walk. That's right. Never. As a matter of fact, he said it's going to be rougher if you come to follow me. I've, I've said this before somewhere. I don't maybe even remember where. But... If the mountain was smooth, you couldn't climb it. That's right. you got to have something to sink your hands and feet into as you climb. And why are we climbing a mountain anyway? Come on, man. Jesus said with faith and lust and see, we can get rid of it. That's it. The church has said we need to climb the mountain. Jesus said we need to get rid of it. That's it. Come on, man. It doesn't come easy. It doesn't happen Come on, man. that That's quickly. Come on. But if you go to him in prayer and you believe in the prayer and you believe what you're asking for and, and I'll get into this in a few minutes, you will see it manifest. Amen. Amen. may not be overnight. may not be the way you want to see it, though, because you're looking at it from a fleshly standpoint. He's looking at it from a spiritual standpoint. Not long ago, I stood right here and, and did a thing on why is it my giving working? You remember that, Pastor Ray? I did a little more study. Um, if you got your Bibles, turn to Matthew 
Turn with me to 1 Peter 4 and 10. That's just before 2 Peter, if you don't know the Bible, it's easier to find it that way. <laughs> 1 Peter 4 10. As every man hath received the gift, even so minister the same one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. Some big ministries, and again I use that word very loosely, they brag about how much they give. I gave away a million dollars. Who did you give it to? Same guy that gave you a million dollars last week. It bounces back and forth among these among these big ministries and the people that are believing and putting money into them and need help aren't getting it. Come on, come on now. The help is coming from the small churches, the true Bible believing, God fearing churches like Freedom Light. That's right. And many more just like it. It's not denominational, it's not we can agree to disagree on a whole lot of different points. Somebody once asked me, what camp are you in? I mentioned this earlier to somebody outside. There ain't but one camp, and that's the camp of Jesus Christ. It's a whole lot of tents. Amen. And all of those tents don't disagree. They don't stand the same. But they're in the same camp. They're followers of Christ Jesus. Let me say this. Uh, it may sound like I'm rabbit tracking a lot, but I'm not. It actually all ties together. If you want to know the disciples, sit in the boat. That's where they are. You want to know Jesus, get out on the water. Amen. Because that's where he is. Oh, yeah. Come on. It's not about sitting in this church or any church that is a true Bible-believing church and hearing and doing nothing with it. What did it say? Even so, minister the same one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. This all ties in to stewardship, which is where I really want to get today. Matthew 25, uh, 14 through 30. A little bit long, but... You'll, you'll see where I'm going with this, I hope. Matthew 25, 14 and 30. Or 14 through 30. And this is written in red, so I guess you're supposed to pay extra attention to it. For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. And unto one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, the, uh, to, uh, to another one, to every man according to his several ability, and straightway took his journey. Now we all know this story. I'm not going to read it all. Yeah. How one who received five talents wisely invested it, and when the master came back, he was able to return what had been given to him, plus the man who had been given two talents, the same, the man who had been given one talent, went out and dug a hole and, and buried it because he knew the master was a tough taskmaster, and if he had accidentally lost the one talent, then the master was going to be mad at it. You notice that the Bible says talent. Now we know that in, in the biblical time, talent was a, a piece of money or a, a piece of currency. But the word talent, isn't that stewardship as well? Amen. I'm believing for total healing, and it, it's getting there. But 
You know, I'm not going to see that manifest until I'm a good steward with what healing I've already received. Amen. Some are believing for a financial blessing. It's going to happen, but it's not going to manifest anymore until you have proven yourself a good steward. That's right. The church is not preaching that today. That's right. The church is preaching... Ask for it, believe it, and you got it. Come on, preacher. Send money to this ministry, that ministry, and it's going to come back to you. It might. If you've proven yourself, if you have proven yourself to have the ability to receive that blessing, you'll get it. But not before. That's right. People are going... I prayed, prayed and prayed and I believed and I believed and nothing happened. Well, last time you prayed and believed and it did manifest, what did you do with it? Did you keep it hidden in your back pocket? Hey, I got an extra ten bucks in my paycheck. I ain't telling anybody about that. Or if I tell somebody that I can walk today and I couldn't walk yesterday, because of Jesus Christ and his healing power, they're going to think I'm crazy, so I'm not going to tell anybody. You're taking a talent and hiding it. That's right. You're not returning it. You're following that good time, sugar-coated, bubblegum gospel of nothing that's being preached today. Yeah, I would love to have a, a new car or a pickup truck or something sitting out there better than that old beat up Cadillac. And it's going to happen. But we're going to have to show ourselves good stewards of that and That's use right. that for his glory and not for That's ours right. before it happens. Today's church is not the church. Testament began on the day of Pentecost in the book of Acts. The New Testament became factual when the Holy Spirit came and dwelled among us. Jesus said that's what it would be, not during his lifetime on earth. It began when the Holy Spirit came. Not many days hence. Not many days back because we just went through the day of Pentecost. Today's church, for the most part, is a liar. Today's church, for the most part, is false prophecy. Today's church, for the most part, is a bunch of con. I was raised in a Presbyterian church in Walterboro, South Carolina. My late brother-in-law was pastor of the largest Presbyterian church in Birmingham, Alabama. Jack told me one time, and I, I, I have no doubt that Jack was a man of God, but he told me with tears in his eyes that he had asked some of his classmates at Presbyterian College, why they were going into ministry. And the answer was job security. Not to change lives and touch souls and to bring souls to the kingdom of God. These people, yeah, I did. I, I, like I said, I grew up in Presbyterian Church. I knew everything there was to know about God. I knew everything there was to know about Jesus. I knew every Bible story that's taught in vacation Bible school. I knew, I, I knew it. I didn't know Jesus. It meant absolutely nothing. 
Preachers today are preaching from this book, and they're not preaching from the heart and the soul of this book. They're preaching from their head knowledge and not their heart knowledge. They're preaching from greed and not greed for the kingdom. I want to see more people turning their lives over to Jesus than I want to see a new car, than I want to see a pocketbook full. I don't care about that stuff. I'm going to get by because God says he's going to provide my needs. The rest of it, I don't care about. The only thing I care about is being a blessing to somebody else. Being able to say to someone, do you know Jesus? And if they say no, being able to make the introduction. That's what my life is about. Where was it at one time? <laughs> Here's what I said. Lies, thievery, connivery. Some of you don't know. Some of you do. I cannot count the county jails from Miami Beach, Florida to San Jose, California, and up into Wisconsin, Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, that I've visited five major felony sentences in the states of Florida, South Carolina, and North Carolina, where there's a condo downtown Columbia right now, it used to be the old walls, we call it. Yep, yep. If anybody's ever heard about it, I was a guest in building one, tier three, and walked through the tunnels every day. I spent time with one of the most notorious motorcycle clubs in the world. If there is any of the Ten Commandments that I have not broken, I can't think of it. But God could take somebody like me. He saw something there that nobody else saw. He saw something there that preachers didn't see. He saw something there that evangelists didn't see. He saw something there that family didn't see. He saw something there that he accepted me into his family. He adopted me into his family. Go to a church today dressed like this and say how long before you're going to get kicked out. I don't remember how many years ago it was, the late Johnny Paycheck had a song out called The Outlaw's Prayer. Yep. Paycheck was a weird dude. About that tall, he had a cowboy hat that was bigger than he was. But he was in the middle of, if you remember, what they call the outlaw country era with Waylon Jennings and Willie Nelson. Hank Jr., of course, Tom Hallblaze. Anyway, he had, the story of the Outlaw's Prayer is Paycheck had played a show on Saturday night. They weren't, if you don't remember him, his biggest song was Take This Job and Shove It. He went into a church the next morning with his beard, his cowboy boots, his blue jeans. They told him he couldn't worship because of the way he looked. But if he looked in, the same people in the congregation were the ones that were at his show the night before, front row, drinking beer and yelling, saying, take this job and shove it. That's the way the church is still today. The church is still turning away the prodigal son that's wanting to return home. The church is turning away the ones that God has called. That's right. I don't want to be 
be associated with today's church. I don't want to be associated with today's Christianity. I want to be out of the boat and walking. I want to be exactly what Christian says, Christ-like. I want to follow Christ. I want to do what Christ wants me to do. And I'm going to fail, of course I am. All of us are. But I don't want to follow some stupid man-made idea of getting <coughs> filthy rich or having every want brought to me. I heard a preacher one time, and I have no reason to doubt this particular man, but he says he never prays for a, a need. He prays for a want because God's already said he's going to provide all the needs. This man has been blessed beyond belief, but I believe he's sincere because I've never heard anything he's preached say otherwise. Same time I've heard others talk how they need this or they need that to spread the gospel. Shouldn't they be using that money to spread the gospel to the poor? That's right. To the hurting, to the hungry, That's right. to the seniors Amen. in their own community. That's it. Rather than flying around the world. Satellite television, Christian television, satellite Christian television today covers every square inch of planet Earth. No preacher nowhere needs that kind of stuff to preach the gospel. Is it useful? Of course it is. Is it good? In some cases, nobody needs it. I want a brand new Cadillac. I don't need it. I want a brand new home. I don't need it. I want to eat steak more often, but I don't need it. God takes care of our needs. And I'm not going to stand here in front of you today and tell you that if you accept Jesus today, then you're going to be rich, that you're going to have everything, you're going to live a life of luxury, you're going to have everything you've ever wanted, and life is going to be a daisy walk for the rest of your life, because it ain't going to happen. And anybody that tells you that it is, is a bald-faced liar. And that's where today's church is become. There are some preachers out there that are great motivational speakers. They ain't preaching the Bible. Most of us could go back and find a Dale Carnegie course. This ain't what I had planned. But I did know I was going to probably be stepping on somebody's toes today. On a lighter note, I told you earlier, I've known Pastor Ray for a while. He not only preaches the Word of God, he lives it. Ray opened himself up a little earlier today when he was talking about a, a weight gain. You like scripture? First Chronicles 4.10. Bless me indeed and expand my boundaries. <laughs>
Spurgeon's church, it's your church. So God, I pray that you will begin to use the church, birth churches that are as you meant them to be. Lord, I remember reading how the early church met in each other's homes. They broke bread together. They helped each other. They stood there for each other. And no one was turned away. If somebody was turned away, half 3,000 get saved in one night. God, I thank you. And I ask you to, to use me and to use Brother Ray and, and Sister Amy, Sister Adara. Use Marvin and Donna. Use everybody in this room, Lord. For as Christians, true Christians, we all have a ministry. Be it a ministry of example. somebody can see Jesus through somebody. There's no more powerful ministry anywhere. Lord, I thank you again. In Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, we're not going to close quite yet. Um, there are two people here I've known for a few years and seen growth over three to four years that I've known them. But there's somebody that's known them a lot longer than I have, and she's asked if she can say a few words first. Say this.
teach me who really God is. And God's going to bless you. When you build your building for your church, do the right love, do the agape love. Accept the Bible as God inspired, infallible, inerrant, immutable, indestructible, and as the indispensable Word of God. Do you understand the requirements, responsibilities, and realities that are about to be placed upon you by being ordained and set apart as an ambassador of the Lord Jesus? preach and practice God's word with boldness to minister to the needs of those to whom you were sent without any partiality and to give yourself sacrificially and without reserve to the educating edification and equipping of the body of Christ. Yes. Will you endeavor to be diligent in the study of God's word, instant and faithful in prayer, an example in Christian piety and discipline before your people and the community in order to show your life a worthy Christian example and that upon your ministry the blessings of God may rest. Yes, Recognizing the sacred responsibility of your call and aware of your own human weaknesses, the leadership and empowerment of the Holy Spirit under that only may you be a faithful minister of him who called you. Do you understand and will you continue? Yes, with God, sir. I charge you to pursue the word of God. I charge you to practice the word of God. I charge you to preach the word of God. And I now ordain Miss Donna Thank you all for being here and make every motion.